Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And if you clicked this one, I know that you are somebody who likes to dabble in the bark arts. This is a video that is likely going to get you a lot of hate after watching it and implementing what the information it contains has. It is very dangerous, very volatile. This is a Guardian Druid Dragonflight PvP guide. I'm going to be covering everything about it that is making it completely bonkers. You want to top the BG scoreboard? You want to top the healing meter too? You want to take 10 players on at once? You want to one-shot people with massive burst damage? You want limitless healing? The is the class for you. We just made a video about it yesterday, showcasing it and its gameplay. So today we're going to go a little bit more on the analytical side. We're going to be detailing every little thing that has to do with Guardian Druid so you can abuse it maximally. So Guardian Druid received a new talent tree and it got a ton of buffs recently moving into the expansion to try and compensate it for PvE. And because of all these damage buff, damage buff, damage buff, damage buff, damage buff, it is in a position where it is doing monstrous, monstrous amounts of damage. So the main focus with the Guardian Druid specialization is going to be ramping up towards Maul. This is going to be your massive kind of burst crit area. Talents to take into account for this are Vulnerable Flesh, which is going to increase the critical strike chance of our maul by 30 percent as well as tooth and claw which is our auto attacks have a chance to empower our next maul increasing its damage up to 80 percent also reducing the target's damage to you by 15 percent if you're doing world pvp 1v1 bgs and stuff like that that portion will be important we also have mangle will increase the damage of your next maul and your maul will increase the damage of your next mangle by 15 percent stacking up to three times so rotating in three mangles into a maul during your berserk window is going to be when you are doing a monstrous amount of damage. Now, some other things to take into account is you have a lot of Berserk talents, things like Berserk Persistence. This is going to make it so that your Frenzied Regeneration has no cooldown. So you're basically going to be going Immortal Mode when you pop Berserk. So you want to think of this as like a double-edged sword. When you're getting low on health and you've run out of Frenzied Regen charges, that's when you've baited your opponents into thinking that you're going to die. You can pop Berserk, immediately hit yourself to full and absolutely crush them uh, because when you're also in Berserk, you're going to be able to spam your Mangle and reduce the rage cost of your maul by 50%. So you're going to be able to do mango, mango, mango maul really fast, get massive burst damage out while also frenzy regening yourself to full HP effectively for free. Uh, some talents you're going to want to avoid is something like two charges of survival instincts. It's really unnecessary. Um, you, you could take it, but I really prefer the damage options towards the bottom of the tree. Brambles is still very important to take. This is when you bark skin, you'll start basically, you know, radiating aoe damage around yourself really powerful against melee attackers when you get swarmed and surrounded you're going to be able to kill a lot of players really easily when you activate bark skin during this window and you're really going to want to make sure that you pick up infected wounds so that your mangle and maul will snare the target because otherwise people will be running away from you very easily now when we get to the bottom of the tree i think there is room for a little bit of nuance and maneuvering around in terms of talents, but there's some components that you really want to um, be aware of. And some of those are Ursoc's Fury. This is Thrash and Maul will grant you a shield for 30% of the damage that you deal. Again, like this, this healing, right, from doing damage is always such an important component to why a specialization ends up being overpowered in PvP. This is an important component. The other one on the right side is Elune's Favor, which is when you're in bear form, your arcane damage will heal you for 30% of the damage that it's dealt. So if you're able to get Moonfire onto a whole bunch of targets, you're going to start just generating shields through your Thrash, through your Maul, through your Moonfire, just by attacking. You're going to generate heals and damage um, at the same time. So this is really effective. Uh, and where we start to get into debate for talent points is whether or not Galactic Guardian, which is 5% chance to get an automatic Moonfire, which would trigger our Loon's Favored, and also make the next Moonfire we cast do 300% more damage, which would also trigger our Loon's Favored healing, or just passive Thrash does 25% more damage, which means we're getting constantly 30% shield from the Thrash. So again, it probably depends on a single target versus AoE situation, battleground situation, this one's probably going to pump out more healing overall. And then 1v1, you're probably going to get more value out of Galactic Guardian. Um, but I'm really going to have to test these ones out specifically as to which one feels better. This one's a little bit more active or automatic. This one also takes you out of your rotation of trying to mangle and maul all the time. And that's where you're going to get your kill pressure to kill a target. I know a lot of people think Guardian Druid is just pad damage, but it's really not if you focus on mangle and maul. 
Um, some of the other ones are Rage of the Sleeper. It's really important just to note with this one that it's no longer CC immunity, but it is significantly lower cooldown. So this is going to prevent 25% of all the damage you take. It's going to increase your damage by 15% and grant you a massive amount of leech and reflect damage. So comboing your bark skin with Rage of the Sleeper, basically if you have like three warriors on you or whatever, two rogues, a demon hunter, and they're all on you, you bark skin Rage of the Sleeper, they will just all evaporate in front of you. You will just absolutely destroy melee DPS. It's going to be pretty much close to nothing that they can do. Um, when you activate the Rage of the Sleeper with the Bark Skin combo like that. And that's when you're going to be doing a monstrous amount of damage that is, it's, you know, you could say it's pad, but it's also going to just be absolutely rampaging um, melee attackers down into the ground. Another debate uh, of Talent Point would be to drop Untamed Savagery and Galactic Guardian to get Incarnation, which would effectively make our Berserk last longer, which means we'd have a longer period of time with no Frenzied Regen cooldown, longer period of time of Mangle and Maul. This is probably like the optimal dueling one um these ones will do more damage and more healing and sustain in battlegrounds but if you're going maybe in skirmish or you know small group combat incarnation could be massive for burst i'm really i'm going to try this likely tonight um on my stream which is li linked in the description down below you can see how all of this experimentation uh will play out for yourself uh, to see which ones are going to be the, the best options kind of show you really like how powerful this spec um is at the moment when we look at the left side of the talent tree in terms of talents, the most important thing um, that I have noted is to get Heart of the Wild. This is just, again, going to enhance the effective healing from your Frenzied Regeneration. Also, if you happen to run out of Frenzied Regeneration charges, it will also increase um, your Rejuve and your Swift Bend damage. Um, so it's going to just be a really nice boost. Renewal just as an extra emergency heal. Well-Honed Instincts, again, for just another automatic procking heal is really important. Um, I was debating whether or not to drop improved stampeding roar for cyclone because i do think if you were going to actually try to play this competitively that having cyclone would be um, a lot better and more important uh, in order to you know end games so this was one that i was thinking about flexing around i'm also going to have the build for this in the description down below if you want um, but i'm just pointing out things that you might want to consider for flipping around this for cyclone is definitely one uh, to consider because this is just such a powerful crowd control effect when we look at honor talents i was focused on playing like a flag carry like infinite mobility spec because i wanted to win bgs and farm primals um toughness just gives you reduced duration of stun which is now valuable because you can't immune cc malorn stiffness makes your travel form super fast and overrun just gives you another mobility cooldown to charge towards a target and stun them but if you were going to want to focus on damage you you would probably not want to be uh running all of these talents specifically um you would want to switch some around and honestly i'm trying to find the one did they delete it? sharpened claws here for 25 percent more thrash damage this is really Really good again because of what we talked about with uh, Ursox Fury, where our thrash damage is going to provide us an absorb shield. So this is really important just for overall damage. And another option is Raging Frenzy, which is Frenzy Regen will also generate rage. And now remember, when we have Berserk active, Frenzy Regen has no cooldown, so we have limitless rage generation, which means we could have limitless mall spam, and we could just completely run somebody down 50k, 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 50k um, with insane combos of burst. Uh, because of that combination so you have some talent points you could still run overrun or you could run den mother if you're in a battleground and want to help your allies if you're not playing with allies solo world pvp or whatever or don't care about your allies overrun is going to be really nice because just an extra stun and an extra mobility cooldown uh, in order to get back to your target so this would be like my most offensive build um, that i could run this is likely going to be pumping out insane damage just completely ridiculous and like i said i'll have the link to the video after this if you've missed some of the gameplay for it this is just the analytical side what is fueling the beast, the behemoth, the monster beneath the depths that should never have been resurfaced. The old god corrupted Ursoc. Um, this is basically what you're going to be aiming for. I'll have this code linked in the description, stream in the description as well, if you're interested to see uh, what we can do with the power of the meme here. Um, we're also kind of highlighting this because they've said that they're going to be doing PvP changes, so maybe this is going to get nerfed. We have to wait and see. Um, I would say that it's got to be likely with how strong it is looking at the moment, but there's a lot of other uh, specs as well. So if you want coverage of the strongest specs, what's looking good, what are good options for you, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button. That is the goal and objective of the stream. And other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this deep dive. I will catch you in the next video.